Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how I made this line painting using nothing more than gloss enamel and a simple edge painter that you can get from Home Depot. Today we're going to be doing a line painting, a striped painting if you will. I've been really enjoying doing these paintings, they've been turning out really good and uh, it just, it kind of excites me to continue painting. I was getting to a point where I didn't necessarily want to keep painting um, but doing these line paintings they just they look so good um, so I'm really happy with them and as a note I just want to let you guys know I did already record my Jackson Pollock painting um, so I've already got it recorded I'm just waiting for 1500 subscribers to actually post it so we're very close now let's go ahead and get into the colors for today and the tools so first off let's do with the colors we've got um, kind of a darker blue this is called uh, midnight sun and then we've got kind of a darker purple not super dark but i guess the, the what you would probably think of if you thought of purple um, we've got a light yellow we've got a dark purple so we've got a darker one here it's called primitive plum we've got a medium blue uh, called periscope which this is okay. It's not my favorite blue, but whatever. And then we've got white. Um, so I'm going to open all those and mix them. And then, you know, we've got our gloves because we can never not get paint all over our hands because it's very messy. And then we'll be using this edge painter. Uh, so this is what you would get at like Home Depot or some other hardware store to paint edges of walls. Uh, and that is what we'll be using. These fine bristles here is what creates the stripes if you will on the painting um, so with that i'm going to go ahead and put the tape on put the gloves on get the paints ready and uh, and then we'll get to painting Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick, and you can see that this paint is very gloopy because uh, it's sat out here, it's cold, right? So the paint is uh, kind of settled and it's dried out a little bit. So I am gonna add a little bit of water because this is water-based paint that I'm using. Uh, it's almost like house paint, which most house paints here in Arizona aren't uh, oil-based, although you, I guess you can still get them specifically, but most paints nowadays are water-based. So I am adding a little bit of water to kind of give it a little bit of viscosity so that it uh, moves a little bit easier. I don't want to thin out too much. I'm not trying to do a Pollock style painting. I just want it to move. So I thought I would uh, give a little bit insight on that. And I did a little, thought I'd do a little ASMR type thing. Now, someone in one of my videos had commented about the gloss enamel and asked if I thin them. On some of them I do, and some of them I don't. And uh, I talk about this in another video, but some of these gloss enamel paints come thicker than others. And I think it has to do with the dyes or the base paint that they use. And some are just thinner uh, than others, some are thicker. So even though they're all gloss enamel, it's all the same brand of paint and everything, some of them are just thicker, and I think it has to do with whatever the base is that they use. Um, so some of them I do uh, add a little bit of water to. I thin them down. I'm trying to find a lid that I have it on there, but I don't have it on any of these. So sometimes I, add, I do add a little water, just like I showed you. I will add a little bit of water just to get it to move, but generally I don't thin them down a whole lot. It's just enough to kind of get the paint to move around so it doesn't clump up. So if I do add anything, it's water.
Okay, so we're all set. I've got our uh, got our paints all kind of ready to go. And now we can go ahead and start painting. So what we're going to do, if you haven't seen any of these videos, uh, is we just kind of take the paint and we run it in lines back and forth across the surface. Oh, and this is watercolor paper, if you're wondering. I would not recommend watercolor paper for gloss enamel. I wouldn't recommend it for probably anything but watercolor paints um, because for me it, it, it tends to warp. So I just happen to have a lot of it and I don't want it to go to waste. So I will use it anyway. Um, what I recommend is probably uh, acrylic paper because it's thicker. And especially if you can if you can get your hands on some really good acrylic paper, then use uh, Argus paper. Argus paper is really, really good, but it's also really expensive. So, you know, if, if you can get it, great. If not, you know, whatever. So we're just putting the paint here in lines. And again, you can kind of see that this one is just really thick. Um, so I'm going to add a little, just a tiny bit of water here. Sometimes this also happens because uh, I leave it in my garage. So it being in the garage, it, it's susceptible to the changes in the temperature. So the paint kind of expands with the heat and shrinks, you know, with the cold. So sometimes that kind of like dehydrates the paint a little bit. So ideally you would want to keep your paints in a temperature controlled area, you know, inside or outside, whatever. But um, I just don't have that luxury. So that's uh, that's why this, this paint is so clumpy and thick. And, why I have to add water sometimes. But I think we're pretty good. It's still a little bit thick, so I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit more water just to really get this paint to move. If it's not gonna work with us, I'm not gonna use it, but I really want to. I'm almost out of this paint anyway, so I kinda wanted to use it before it just got to the point where it was so dry it wasn't usable. That's another thing, like as it gets to the bottom of the can, it just uh, it dries out and then it's like unusable. So I really didn't want that to happen. Uh, so I, you know, I want to get use out of it. So all right, I think that's pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, use it here. And again, we're just making some thin lines here to really fill in the painting. I'm not going to do purple on all of them. You know, we don't we don't want it to be like the same thing all the way down. I'm not trying to create some kind of pattern or rainbow or anything. You know, I just want those colors to really show up. So what I'll probably do is like right here, I'll skip this area, but we're going to do like a big section of that here. Okay, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and move on to blue, the yellow here. Yellow is a little thick, but I think it'll be okay. I'm not going to add any, any water to it. Put some yellow down here, and what I'll do is I'll actually just overlap a little bit. We'll put a line here, and we'll go up here, and then we'll go right here. And that's probably enough. All right, so now I got this other darker purple. You can see the difference just in the two purples. Um, one is more of a plum than a purple. And we'll just go right there. And I don't know how these colors are going to look together, honestly. I just kind of picked them at random today. These blues, you can kind of see a little bit of difference in the blues. This one's a little bit lighter than the other one, but um, they are they are kind of similar. I didn't realize how similar they were before I started using them. But it's going to be okay, I think. All right. Then we're going to have white. And white can tend to get lost in other colors. So sometimes white is challenging to use, especially with gloss enamel, because unlike acrylic, where acrylic or oil has a little bit of body to it, uh, gloss enamel is very like wet, and it doesn't have a lot of body to it, so it tends to get lost um, and mix very easily. So I don't know how the white's going to carry through this painting, so we're just going to add a couple of stripes and call it a day. Okay. So we've got our paints down. I hope it's enough. I, I don't know for sure if it's enough, but I also don't want to use too much. I tend to do that a lot, and I don't want to do that. All right, so now we literally just do exactly what you would think we do. 
then you just take this paint with this little brush and you just pull it very slowly that's kind of a measured stroke you just pull it through the paint and I'm pretty I'm pushing pretty firmly but I'm not really digging into the surface I'm pushing hard enough that the paint isn't sticking behind I'm not pushing so hard that it like rips the surface or anything crazy and actually that was a really really solid really solid um, pull through the only problem I had was this part right here where the edge of the painting didn't get covered so I am going to go through it one more time again we're just pulling very slowly very methodically to really get these paints to just kind of glide right through the painting and we keep it even okay if it's not perfect it's stopping at the end but we're gonna pull through all right perfect all right that is a good clean line and we're hoping for the same on this now the, the only issue i have is that because this edge painter isn't um you know big enough to do the whole painting at once i kind of have to overlap the previous layer because if i don't the colors will cool now the cool thing is that because it already has colors on it from the previous layers it's going to pull those colors through as well and this is why you can see these really really thin lines of different colors all right and you can see that the paint is kind of pooling because there was too much that was something i was worried about um, but that's why i put these extra pieces of tape here all right so now we can kind of pull our next one and it's not catching all of it so we need to push a little harder and the paint is pulling so we need to go up a little bit okay all right And we're going to overlap a little bit. I'm going to lighten my grip a little bit. I think I was pushing a little too hard because I was losing some of those colors. And of course, it didn't uh, go all the way across. So if I push, if I don't push hard enough, I run into that issue where it can skip over it. But if I push too hard, then I lose some of the lines. So it's kind of a balance. I also went kind of fast on that layer, so I'm going to slow it down. Okay. So now we've got the last layer here. I think I can turn it this way and probably get all the paint. Okay, and I think we're good. There's a little hiccup there, I think. Yeah, if I keep going over it, I'm gonna lose those colors, so I'm gonna leave it alone. It's okay if it's not perfect. All right, so that is the final painting. Um, I want to pull the tape off, but the only issue is that if I pull it off, it could run some of these colors together. Um, so it's kind of an issue that I have with the how much paint is on there right now. So I may leave it and then just kind of pull it once it dries. But let me go ahead and show you guys the final painting. I think it's 
pretty good. There's a couple of dots um, that I'm not crazy about, but it kind of also adds a little bit of character to the painting. So I'll probably not try to mess with them. Every time I try to fix something like that, I only make it worse. Like an analogy for my life, I guess. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. All right. Let me go ahead and show you guys the final painting. Sorry, the microphone's in the way. All right. So this is the final piece. So there's the final piece. And maybe I'll try to get a, a thumbnail. Give me one second, guys. Okay, cool. I got it. All right. So there's the final piece. Let's kind of look at some of these lines here. So look at these individual lines. They're so thin, and it really excites me to see these really thin lines. I mean, look at look at that. When it focuses, you can really see um, how thin these lines are and how there's color within the color. I don't know. I know this isn't. Uh, it's not super exciting. But it, it is, in a way, because it's it's different, and it's abstract, but it's abstract with structure. And I think that that's what excites me. I mean, look at that. It, even within the colors that we did, it's, you know, purple, white, greenish, blue, back to white, back to dark green. Like, it, it's just awesome. And it, it's something I never, um, I don't know, it's something I tried to get before, and I couldn't get it, so... It's pretty exciting, but anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye, guys.